What's happening, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to episode number two of Thrifty Business with JNA. Oh. Where am I? All right, so I'm having a little bit. Shoot. Is that your end or my end? What, what, what? Oh, talk for a sec, Nay. Hi, everybody. There we go. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> not a, not a great way to start. I had the open feed of the show live in my ears, and it was screwing me up, and I couldn't figure out where the open window was. So let's try it again. Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to episode two <laughs> of Thrifty Business with Jay and Nay. I'm your host, Vegas Jay. And I'm Philly Nay. Holy cow. Sorry about that. I, I thought I was so ready. I was like wandering around my house. I was like, yeah, we got it. We're, we're ahead of the schedule today. What a ding -a We're all good. It's okay. <laughs> all right. When we start every show, we started with Jason's Tiki Talk. So let's get right into that. And tonight we are going to be actually drinking an actual cocktail. I have foregone the Cuba Libre for this evening, and I made a real cocktail. So the cocktail is called Ciro Special. And Ciro's was a, Holly, um, a nightclub in Hollywood back in the 1940s, and that's when this drink uh, was invented. So it wasn't really a tiki place, so to speak, uh, but they had good rum cocktails. And the main base rum, or the rum in this drink, is uh, dark Jamaican rum. So I am using Legend. This is a Myers 10-year-aged rum. It's really, really yummy. And my cocktail, or my uh, tiki mug of the evening, is called the, um, it's from the Islander, it was a tiki restaurant, and this mug is called the Islander Earring Head. So I'm going to take a little sip of my Ciro Special. Okay. And I am also um, participating in Jay's tiki time. Um, I have uh, the rest of the bottle I'm from last week, <laughs> the blue chair rum that we shared last week, and... I have um, a little lime, a little juice, and a little bit of rum. And my tiki mug is actually a dud mug. It's just a common <laughs> mug. But I like it. Um, and it was chipped, so I was going to put it in a lot. And uh, I couldn't put it in the lot because of the chip. So I'm keeping it for myself, and I'm pretty happy with it. So. And, uh, cheers. Cheers, baby. And I'm going to do something different this week because we're actually um, doing a cocktail. I am showing you the recipe. So if you want to write it down... Here's the recipe. It's very simple. I actually made a double batch, so I didn't have to run off in the middle of the show to make another one. It's meant to be served kind of um, straight up with uh, in a martini-type glass. So uh, fresh lime juice, uh, cream de cassis, Grand Marnier, and dark Jamaican rum. So you shake it over ice and strain into a cocktail glass. It is yummy. Everyone that comes here that has one in my house is like, oh, my God, that was so delicious. So that is my drink for this evening. Mmm, so good. So let's uh, let's dive right into let's dive right into you. If you tuned in last week, you saw some news, and uh, we're gonna check in with Nay and see how she's doing and where we're at. And uh, she wants to say a couple things. So the floor is yours, Nadine. Okay. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone for the outpouring of support. It was actually overwhelming to me. I didn't expect to have so much love and support um, from everyone. And I just wanted you all to know that I have read all of the positive comments, um, and um, I've also um, received a lot of personal messages, and I will get to answering all of those. Um, it's just, um, like I said, it's been a little bit overwhelming because I didn't expect to receive such a great response. And thank you so much, everyone, for your love and support. And um, I feel like I can fight even harder with everybody behind me. So I really wanted to just say that I appreciate that. And we have decided, based on Nadine's news, to do something fun mm -hmm. and to raise some money. So here is what we are going to do. This, this got born out of one of the members in Thrifting with the Boys put a picture of herself wearing the bra she was about to sell on her head. Gwen Sharp. Hello, Gwen. And so we have born this idea. Our contest is a buck for a bra. And here's the details. We are going to have everybody go to our fan page, Thrifty Business with J&A, like it, 
and then put up a picture of yourself wearing a bra on your head or your kid or your dog or your cat or your turtle or whatever you got. And uh, on behalf of my co-host Nadine, my wife Stacy and I are going to donate one dollar to the National Breast Cancer Awareness Fund awareness fund per entry. And we have up to a thousand dollars. So we need a thousand people to enter this contest. I would like to give a thousand dollars on behalf of Nadine and every family member and friend that any one of us watching or in the show here has been affected by cancer. So this here's is, sorry. This is so great. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you. This is great that we're doing this. Um, this is the kind of um, thing that I wanted this to turn into. Um, you know, instead of a, a sad thing, it's. I think that you know we can definitely do some good. So. So here's the uh, here's the deal. So not only are we going to raise money. So my wife and I will donate a dollar for every contestant who enters. Uh, we're going to hopefully get everyone else to donate. So I know if some people don't have a lot of money, if we got a thousand people to participate and everybody just donated just five dollars, and Stacy and I put in a thousand, that'd be six thousand dollars to breast cancer awareness. And I think that would be an awesome, awesome thing. But there's more. But wait, there's more. There are prizes. The first prize gets a $150 eBay gift card. Now, you cannot beat that for throwing a bra on your head. If you're funny and you can come up with a funny shot, you get $150. Bucks. Second prize, $100. Third prize, $50. These are all gift cards to eBay. So I am going to launch it right now on our fan page, and you can start tonight. We're going to run the contest for one week, and the only place you can play is on our fan page. So please go over there and like it and start putting those pictures up, and then I cannot wait to send them a big check at the end of the week, all right? I'm so excited about this contest. It's going to be great. Be creative. Be funny. You know, you got a pet turtle? Wrap him in your bra. Do something. Uh, our, our picture here, I thought, was both of us was hilarious. I'm going to pop that back up here because there's us being a goofball. So <laughs> let's, let's get this up. I, you got, we got a week to get 1,000 entries, all right? So I'm counting on everybody to participate, plus what the heck, you might win $150 worth of shopping on eBay. You can't beat that. Alrighty. So that's our contest. Uh, we will have links. Uh, you know, Like I said, go to our fan page. We'll have it in Thrifting with the Boys. Uh, but now we are going to get into the uh, main meat of the show, and we are going to talk about... Hello, where's my mouse? There we go. Oh, what is going on there? Oh, there we go. It helps to turn it up. All right. There we go. Tonight, we're, now we're going to talk about our scores of the week. And our scores of the week are typically items that we found that are going to be, you know, we found for cheap and they're going to be good sellers. So here is my score of the week. I got to pick, uh, I picked the Riviera Casino closing sale five times. And mm -hmm. I on two separate occasions found uh, all of their uh, the tap handles from the bars. So this is one that uh, I did quite well on. All the tap handles were $5, and this one uh, sold for $39.50. And if you have an eBay store right now, the new structure to the store is you get 100 free collectible auctions a month. So that's what I used. I did some free auctions for collectibles. And if you notice... I did a nice close-up of the top of the uh, beer tap because there's a squirrel holding the hop. Now, I could have done the full shot, and when I do things that are long like this, I do a shot on an angle so it kind of fills up the square, but I wanted people, especially people shopping on their phone, to see it, get excited about it, and hey, I got seven bids. I started at $24.99, and it closed at almost 40 bucks. So I think I did quite good on that. So that's my score today. That's a good score. And we're going to pop, I'm not even going to come back, I'm going to pop right into Nays, and so... Okay, so this, um, actually, the reason that this is a score is because I bought three similar um, Kamehameha um, Hawaiian ties um, all together for $10. So um, I paid approximately three thirty-three dollars apiece. And I, this is the second one that I've already sold for full asking price of $34.99. I only have one left now. So... Um, that lot that I purchased was definitely a big score. Um, like I said, I still have one more to sell, and I, and I believe that it'll go for the same price. So um, 
So that's my one score, and then I have another one to show. So before we drop off, jump off this one, if I ever had to wear a tie, which will never happen again <laughs> for the rest of my life, I would rock this one. It is a cool tie, yeah. That is an amazing, amazing tie, and I'll, we'll show we'll show the label here because this is um, a vintage Kamehameha yeah. label. So there's the label, uh, and you'll see this on shirts and dresses too. So so keep in mind. Kamehameha didn't make just ties. They made all kinds of Hawaiian wear. It always sells well for me. It sold well for Nadine. So keep your eyes peeled. Yep. So. All right. I'm popping back into us, and you have a score to show us. Um, yeah. So while I was thrifting uh, this week with, uh, with Jason was in Philly, I actually found this. Uh, it's a Shakita Banana Women's Cycling Jersey, and it's new with tags. I actually found it in the children's section, but it's a women's size small, um, and the only ones that I've been able to pull up, I haven't been able to pull up any completeds yet, um, but the only ones I've been able to pull up so far are men's, and they are listed at $90 right now, so I have a good feeling this one is going to be a big score for me once I, once I get it listed and sold, so I'll, I'll update everyone on that. You know, we should have done this taking a picture of me in it. Well, it would have ruined it, but... <laughs> It would have been a little too small, too. Yeah. yeah. It's a small. I am far from small. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we have seen our scores of the week, and then we know what's next. Oh, there we go. And what is next is our duds of the week, because not everything is a winning uh, is a winning item. So we all have our duds. <laughs> All right. Oh, whoops, wrong. So my dud, where did my duds go? Oh, they're there. Here's my dud, and I thought, uh, I thought it would be a winner. So I was at a Savers one day, and they somebody had dropped somebody obviously a tequila rep had dropped off all these bandanas. There was um, a yellow Cabo Wabo and a black Cabo Wabo, which is what I sell quite well. And then these Jose Cuervos. Everyone knows a Jose Cuervo. I can't give these bandanas away. So I got them for nine ninety nine. I, I was taking offers of five bucks with free shipping because it uh, it just sits. And I have, I don't know, 50 of them. So maybe one day I will use them as a party favor. So if you ever come to my house and you leave with a Jose Cuervo tequila bandana, you know why. All right, so that's mine. And then here is Nadine's uh, dud of the week. Okay, this is a dud because... I sell a lot of yarn, and I actually bought this um, when I first started selling yarn. Um, and I bought all these, I found all these unopened vintage packs of latch hook yarn, and I thought this was going to be a great sell. But it has sat in my store for <laughs> quite a while, well over a year, maybe longer. It took up a lot of space, actually, to store the whole lot and, because I'm limited on space. And then the other thing with it um, is that... I wasn't taking into account when I priced it with free shipping um, that it was over 13 ounces, which means that it couldn't go first class. So I was able to get it into a padded flat rate envelope, um, which is only a little over five dollars. But still, it wasn't really worth the store and um, you know to to get that price. There there just wasn't a lot of profit in it, and it just took too long to sell. So I am not going to be buying. Um, latch hook yarn if I find it again. Okay, I won't buy it either then. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've never bought it before in my life, I don't think I'll start today. Other yarns sell well, but not that. So. See, that, that's where I get lost, because I know yarns sell well, but when I look at it, I just yep, like... It all, yep, that, and that was, a, that was definitely a mistake. But it's gone, it's out of here, so my dad is sold and has a new home now, finally. Don't... Don't dwell on your mistakes, but, you know, learn from them. I do every day. You know, I, I should have just bought the Cabo Wobbles and left the Jose Cuervo behind. <laughs> but it's all about learning, too. It's, oh, absolutely. Yeah, so. All right, so after we do our duds and our scores. We do our Close Encounters of the Thrifty Kind. I will go first since I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I tend to forget mine, so 
Let me get mine out, then I'll throw it to Nadine. Yeah, it kind of is a continuation. Of, you'll see in a second. Yeah. It's funny. So, you know, our close encounters with Thrifty Kind is, is people we have interacted with in the thrift store. Sometimes funny, weird, uh, creepy, you know, whatever. And mine is from my favorite uh, thrift store. It's a Savers, but it's in a uh, little weirder, rougher part of town. I call it Crazy Town because there's always crazy stuff going on. So... As we go on in our episodes, you will hear many stories from Crazy Town Savers. So my favorite one, though, is I was waiting to check out, and I was behind two girls, and the bill was $10.15. And so the girl, who was actually buying the stuff, she whips out a 10, hands it to the girl, and looks at her friend and goes, you got 15 cents? And without hesitation, the girl reaches into her bra and whips out three nickels. Now, she didn't fumble... She didn't look around. She whipped out three nickels. And in my head, my head's just, I'm like, I've seen people carry, like, cash and, and phones in their bra, but change? And are, like, nickels on one side and quarters on the other? So I was just like, wow, I love this store. Because I always leave with some fun story like that. And then Nay's uh, thrifty uh, encounter actually has a visual, so let me get exactly. that up. So I we can, uh, we can talk about that. Um... And Nays is at her favorite Goodwill, so hang My on. My favorite Goodwill, yes. All right, so this is the visual that goes with uh, Nadine's. Okay, so when Jason and I were thrifting in Philly last week, he tried on, it was in the women's section. I don't even know if it's a men's or women's jacket. I think it's a men's. It was, it was huge, and it fit Jason, so he had to model it. Well, when I went back to that same thrift store on my lunch yesterday, the jacket was still there in the same spot in the women's section. So I had to, of course, put it on, model it, and send the picture to Jason. And the funny thing is the encounter happened because I put the jacket on, and there was a woman standing there shopping. Um, she was, like, down the aisle a little bit. And she turned around, and she said, Honey, are you cold? And I said, No, no, no. I'm just, you know, trying on the jacket. And then she looked at me, and she said, You know, that really doesn't fit you so well. That's that's a little big on you. I don't I don't... I don't. Th I wouldn't recommend buying that. And then I started taking a picture of myself, and she was looking at me. And I said, "I'm just taking a picture for my friend. It's okay." But I think she thought I was a little crazy, so she kind of just scooted out of there. But she thought you were like, you know, Kim Kardashian, like, ooh, hang on. Yeah, but she was trying to t trying to give me fashion advice that the jacket just was not for me. But so that was a funny continuation from our thrifting uh, adventures last week. And, you know, there's kind of a tip. If you see something you think, man, maybe I should get it, but then you don't. Mm -hmm. If you go in a week later, and it's there. So, and in the these, same spot. <laughs> that, that tells you it's a dud. Like, yeah. everybody's looked at it and said, mm, nope. You know, the next day it's there is one thing. If it's there a week later. Yeah, it, it was a full week later. Yes. It was not meant to be. I will tell you that for sure. All right, so after we do all that, the next thing we do is our Thrifty Tip of the Week. And we're actually doing a joint Thrifty Tip tonight. So when I was in Philly, not this past time with May, but the month before when I was doing an event, uh, we had about an hour and a half to kill before she had to take me to the airport. And I said, oh, my gosh, there's a uh, save, uh, Salvation Army really close to here. And she goes, there is? To the airport. I go, yeah, let's go check it out. And so our thrifty tip of the week, and we're, uh, I'm going to explain it a little bit in detail, is uh, make sure to go ghetto thrifty. And when I say ghetto thrifting, I don't mean specifically the color of anyone's skin, but just the neighborhood it's in. Now, the store Nadine and I went to in Philly, the parking lot was uh, enclosed in chain link and barbed wire. That yeah, is not a thrift was, store in a high end place. It was very secure, and it's not. A, it wasn't a part of town that I was familiar with. I'll just say. And the store I go to, besides Crazy Town Savers, there's a store even further down into Crazy Area, has bullet holes in the window. You do not see bullet holes in the thrift stores in the fancy parts of town. But here's why we go to the rough parts of town. There's good stuff. Typically, in a lower-income neighborhood, people are buying stuff for themselves. And so if there's something kind of fun and fancy, they, they get left behind. So you can you can go in and thrift and find some sweet, sweet scores. So we have some live visuals of the stuff we found and the prices we paid that day. So what do you got there, Nay? Okay. First up, I have a pair of Lily Pulitzer 
um, thong sandals. Um, they are. Um, they actually have this cool. Um, they have this cool. Can you see? They have this cool gold um, frog on them. Hold it up a little higher, now. Yeah. They're a little misshapen, but I can I can get them shaped out again. But they have this beautiful gold um, like frog with all this bling on it. Um, and I paid four ninety nine for them, and I know they'll sell well. They're Lily Pulitzer. The bottoms are a little worn, but that doesn't really matter. Um, they'll clean up and reshape well, and they're in they're in pretty good condition. Um, my next score, Jason actually found this one for me. Um, it is a beaded vintage um, evening bag, and if you open it on the inside, you can see that it's brand new, and the $45 price tag is still on it, and it's a very small clutch bag, so I'm probably going to ask um, around that price for it because it's just it's a beautiful bag. It's heavy. Um, you can tell that the beads aren't, you know, it wasn't, it's high quality, so, um, so that was a good score. Gorgeous. And the other one is, there's a lot of crazy cat people out there. I'm actually one of them. So... <laughs> Um, I found this great bag that it's a tapestry bag and it's just covered in cats and it's a great size it's a big it zippers at the top it's in good condition so I just love that anything I find with cats on it if it's in good condition I buy because crazy cat people always buy it and I also found um, these are men's shoes I don't usually um, venture into the men's shoe category I stick with women's shoes but um these are actually, um, they're Sperry Top Cider Gold Cup Collection shoes. They're in almost perfect shape. Um, and um, I, I looked at some of the completed quickly while I was shopping, and they were selling really high. Um, so I think that these are going to do well once I get them listed. And finally, I have... I just I love finding vintage Vera Bradley bags that are completely out of um, you know they're they're a lot of a lot of the newer ones are discontinued but these are these are like the old old ones like this is probably from the early 90s or the 80s and it's just a great print it's a large size it's in great condition you can see the old um, Vera Bradley tag inside if I can get it higher 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 yeah uh, there we go. There we go. Hold it steady. Hold it steady. Perfect. And I have one more, actually. I know I said five. Oh, you little liar. I you know, little, I little liar. This, I found this awesome um, baby comforter blanket. It looks like it's from the 40s or 50s from the print. It's in great condition. I'm probably going to have it cleaned um, before I do list it just because of the fact that it's got little ducks on it. It's adorable. Just because of the fact that... Um, it does have like a few dirt marks on it and whatnot, but it's um it's just such a great old old um, 40s or 50s blanket. So, hey Nate, do me a favor, and uh, people are talking about it. Angle your computer down towards you a little bit. You're getting lost in your name. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Is that better. Okay. Yep. There we go. Thank Good you. Job. All right. So here's some of my scores from that Salvation Army, and let me tell you, uh, some of the nicest employees too. They were really sweet there. They were great. Yes. All right, Some so not stores are really nice too. Oh yeah, it was a great store. <laughs> yeah. So not silver tab baggies, but silver tab loose. Not as desirable, but these are in great shape, and it was only uh, eight bucks. So I'm thinking, and they're thirty eight thirties. I am thinking a good thirty five forty dollars. And my next one is not one lost in space T-shirt, and this is the Jupiter two there. Their ship, and for you young kids, Lost in Space was an awesome TV show when I was a kid. But I found two Lost in Space T-shirts. So here's Robbie the robot, and th Robbie was three dollars, and the Jupiter Two was three dollars. Uh, then from anybody who was a punk in the '80s, I found a Dead Kennedy shirt for one dollar. And then being Philly, now, anytime you live in a city that has a big sports team, obviously, go Cavs, hello, Cleveland. Anytime you live in a city with a big sports team, you're going to see a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the shirts and jerseys. you got to look for the older or the rare. 
Don't just grab the normals. So this is a 1990, let me get the exact year, 1992 Philadelphia Eagles Taz <laughs> sweatshirt. Yeah, that's awesome. And this was a whole $2. So... I know from being a Philly person that that's going to, like, the Phillies fans around here are crazy. The Eagles fans and the Phillies fans are crazy, so they're going to they're gonna love that one. And between Nay and I, the biggest fine score was this person I'm about to show you. Oh, yeah, this was, this was a good one. So I found this brand a long, long time ago, and I found a uh, Hawaiian uh, print version of, of, one of one of their purses. And so I was going to give it to my wife, and then I looked it up because I didn't, I didn't know this designer. I looked it up and I went, sorry, you're not getting this purse. It's worth too much money. So the purse, the brand is Isabella Fiore. And I will get out the tag if I can. There we go. Mm -hmm. Isabella Fiore. And she does these great purses with a lot of bling. So if you can see this one with the cherries, lots of bling. And, you know, these purses sell $100, $150, $200 on the secondary market. And I paid seven bucks for this. So this is a sweet, sweet score. And you know what? Sometimes you got to get to the other side of the tracks to find the goodies. And that's that's our tip for this week. All righty. Uh, before we get into our last uh, normal segment, I want to uh, uh, give a shout out to a friend of ours who was helping out. If you are in our chat right now mm -hmm. on YouTube, we have a good friend named Christine who is a, our official answer person answer girl what do you want to call her nay she's our answer girl she's All great right. we love christine so if you're in the chat right now christine lemoyne uh any you know if there's a question or, or if nay and i say something that's like jargon and you don't get it ask in there and christine will answer you everybody else is good and, and they're great help but if christine's answering that's directly from us so uh big shout out to christine thank you and we we, we dearly we love you for helping out. Yes, thank you so much, Christine. Yay. Yay, Christine. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> All right, so our last segment before we bring on our extra special guest of the week is our viewers' two-minute topic of the week. And our topic, our viewer this week is Patty Campbell. And Patty asked, do you cha uh, change what you source based on the season or holidays? And if so, when do you start gearing up for Halloween, Christmas, etc.? And I think the etc. means Arbor Day and Secretary's Day. So what we do is we do um, 60 seconds each with a little timer. Um, okay, get away from me. And I forgot to grab my handy-dandy little stand, so I'll be the handy-dandy little stand. And so, Nay, you are up. And here we go. Okay. So I do not um, shop. I shop for seasonal items all year round. I uh, just recently bought some uh, Christmas uh, Hallmark ornaments, and I listed them. If I find Halloween in July or in January, I'll buy it. And I will list it right away because people like to get ahead of the holidays. Um, you never know who's going to purchase what at what time. And um, I just... I don't I don't um, list seasonally at all. I, I try to um, and Christmas sells all year round. By the way, I mean I sell Christmas. I can sell it in July whenever. So and it's the same thing with the other holidays. So once I get it, I list it, and uh, if it sits until around the holiday, that's fine with me. But often it'll sell at odd times that do not coincide with that holiday or season. So that's it. All right, you came in short again. Come on, you you give on it. You come in five seconds short like every week. I'm telling you, I'm switching this to the 55 second topic of the week. All right, so here I go. So I am a little different. I used to be the guy that said, okay, you can buy holidays all year, but I would put them in a tub and I put them away until till close to Halloween, so like September or close to Christmas, like the end of October, beginning of November. And then one year, I got some free listings after Christmas. So I threw every Christmas thing back up, and they started to sell. And I used to teach people, save it until it's close. And then once I realized that, like, oh, people buy stuff all year, I was like, ah, oh, crap, I got to make sure that I get my stuff up. So I don't save it anymore. And a good example, of if you're in our Facebook group, Thrifting with the Boys, my friend Greg bought a Tommy Bahama Christmas shirt just last week. Everybody was selling theirs for like 30 or 40 
he put his up for 70 and it sold like that. So he he knows you don't wait till Christmas time. And so I'm telling you, shop all year and list all year. And that's mm -hmm. the tip from Jay and A. I'm going to come in right at 60. Go. All right. I got it. I want to add one thing, too, about that. Holiday crafts, um, kits and whatnot sell way ahead of time because people like to make them. They like to start making them in advance. So those also sell year-round. So. Cool. All right. So what time is it now, Nay? Is it our guest? Oh, you, you know it. We're going to bring in our guest, uh, Tim Taylor. Let me unmute Tim here. And Tim, uh, I didn't know Tim. Uh, I've not known Tim for long. Tim's been in Threatening with the Boys for quite a while. And uh, Tim and I finally got to meet in person two months ago when I was home in Cleveland. He took a class for me. And since then, Tim has become my hero. <laughs> And I wanted to share, I wanted Tim to share his story with you. And it's kind of a continuation from last week. So I shared about my arm. It almost killed me. I almost lost it. I kind of persevered and, and worked through it. Aideen shared about her cancer. And I'm assuming you can tell, I'm going to pop Tim on the main screen here. Tim is in a wheelchair. So Tim's going to talk a little bit about that. But Tim is the man. And so we're going to hear some stories from Tim. Yes, Nay. Um, Tim had sent me a message. He was one of the people that, that messaged me this week, and unfortunately I wasn't able to get back to him um, until today, but I did appreciate um, the message that he sent, and he said in his message that I inspired him, but I just wanted Tim to know that he inspires me, so um, I, think, I think he has a great story. All right, so I'm going to, uh, Tim's a little bit further from his computer than the rest of us. I'm going to turn Tim's mic up a little bit. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to yell at Tim. That, that safe Ferris shirt hanging over your shoulder, I sold that about a year ago, and I have lost it, and I have not found it since. And I had to tell a customer, my bad. And then you had to tease me with that exact shirt. <laughs> Completely on accident. I had no idea. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, and uh, nice Foo Fighters t-shirt, by the way, brother. I love that. I actually found this at a uh, the Salvation Army here uh, in Erie, and it's actually one of the most comfortable t-shirts I've ever put on. It's I, my... I, see, Foo yeah. Fighters is a great band, and I met Dave Grohl waiting for a flight out of LAX one time, and one of the nicest uh, rock stars I've ever met, and I've met quite a few. So You're so lucky. I'm Good both. idea. So I'm going to have Tim share his story, and uh, I'm assuming most of you can see or tell that Tim is in a wheelchair. Uh, that's not a surprise nor a, a hidden fact. So Tim's going to share a little bit about um, his story, and then we're, we're going to have him share his screw you to goodwill, I'm going to shop your story. So, <laughs> so why, why don't you go ahead, Tim, tell us what you want to tell us, and then uh, we'll go on from there. Um, okay, back in uh, 2003... Um, I was dating a girl, and I was good friends with her uh, sister. And after a softball game, I was 18, uh, two months before my 19th birthday. And they, her sister was the same age, and my girlfriend was a year younger than I. And uh, we were on our way to get a pizza one night after a softball game for the family. And we were rounding a turn around um, a bend, and there was a vehicle coming at us. And we swerved uh, to miss the car. We did, and we ended up uh, colliding with a tree. And I actually woke up in the hospital uh, about seven days later, um, and they had told me that I was the only one uh, that lived in the accident and uh, that I was going to be uh, paralyzed um, from the chest or neck down, I guess, and I was going to have a life of... Um, you know, fighting and battling and obstacles and um, so I just kind of thought and thought for a long time and you know, I, I, I got down on myself for a little bit but um, every day uh, in the hospital I had friends um, there all the time uh, every day they'd stop in and see me and it, like family, friends um, and it brought my, you know morale up and I my attitude so uh I, you know, I thought for a while, and I thought that, you know, there's no point in being down about this, and so, no matter the situation, 
no matter what I do, everything I do, um, I make the best of it. And uh, so I spent three months in the hospital and um, another seven after that in uh, um, physical therapy, trying to, you know, work my arms and stuff. For the first month, I couldn't move at all. You know, I had tubes and whatnot sticking out of me. And um, so I uh, went through physical therapy and I learned how to, you know, use my arms, use you know, what I could, and I started driving my chair, and uh, fast forward um, a couple years, I uh, seen a show called uh, Thrift Hunters, and, you know, I'm, I'm on a fixed income, um, other than, you know, I DJ on the side as much as I can, um, it's one of my hobbies that I love to do, and uh, when I saw Thrift Hunters, I thought, you know, this is something that I think I could do. Um, I'm okay on the computer, but so I started reading, and I discovered Thrifting with the Boys when uh, Jay introduced me to it um, a while back, and I just started learning from everybody on there, and I appreciate what he's done for me. Everybody has their hero, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Kim Kardashian or LeBron James or, you know, whatever. Well, Jay is kind of mine. Um, you know, when I saw him, I thought, you know, I can do that. And so I'm kind of studying his ways, and he's taught me a lot when I got a chance to go over to Cleveland on the west side and or on the east side and meet him. You know, it was one of the best days I've had in a long time. And uh, it was fun. It was, it was a great time. I found some cool stuff and learned a lot of things. Um, you know, and like I said, I'm not going to let, you know, something as small as a minor spinal cord injury is what I call it, get in my way <laughs> of having fun. Um, you know, I've done a lot of good things, you know, even though, you know, yeah, I am in a wheelchair, but there's still a lot of things that I can do. So I do do them. Yeah, I said do do. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. Um, no, I, I do what I can. And, um, I've been, I'm pretty new to the eBay world. I've bought a lot of things off there, but I've never sold. Um, I sold a car amplifier a few years back is my very first thing. I kind of forgot about it. And then when Thrift Hunters came on, I just said, you know what, I'm going to go for it. And I haven't stopped yet, and I love it. It's so much fun. I like to be able to, to quote, unquote, work from home, I guess. Um, you know, I can sit out under the stars at night and list my products and, I gotta say thank you to my care attendants, which you know they help me uh, take pictures, and I list the things, and they pack them, and we have a good team, and I just you know it works. It's a you know it's a smooth running machine, I guess um, is the best I can describe it. So, um, so, so I've 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 met your uh, one of your helpers. Or do you have do you have more than one helper, or is it just Lisa? Uh, yeah, I have a few of them. Um, they, you know, they work different times, different days, or whatever. Um, but yeah, Lisa, Lisa has been with me for four ish years, a um, little over, um, and she's been there through a lot. So, um, and she's helped me pack. She helped me actually uh, pack those skis for the most part, and um, that was a that was one of the big tests. I had a Franken box that we had to create, you know, somehow and. We actually got through it, and but yeah, she's here with me. Um, I don't know if you want to slide in. Yeah, yeah. So here, well, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll go back to your story a little bit, but since yeah, you brought up yeah. the skis, let me show. So Tim's got scores and duds, like we always have our guests share us. So let me share, let me share Tim's score with you, because he is talking about uh, these skis right here. Boom, there we go. So I love old uh, water skis. Now the problem is when I find them, and the same goes with my mom and dad, we put them up in our decor in our tiki houses. You found some and sold some. So what? Um, do you remember what you paid for these, Tim? <laughs> uh, they were sitting in a corner, and I actually saw this sticker, and I couldn't believe it. I wasn't sure if I was seeing things, but I paid $4 for them. Get out four dollars. Nope, I, I, I spent well. I'm um, plus tax. Oh well, all right. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so a little over four bucks. But yeah, I, I I got a screaming deal. At the time, I wasn't sure, so I did a little bit of research real quick, and I said throw them in the cart as quick as you can get them in there, and 
packed them up in my van and drove home and did a little more research, took some pictures and sold them uh, a couple months. Was, they were on there for a good month or two maybe. Um, but yeah, I shipped them out to Florida and he loves them. And is Lisa, is Lisa there? Yeah, yeah, she's right here. So let's meet oh, Lisa. I met Lisa at a shopping, so Nadine, you're about to meet Lisa for the first time. You can bring it to me. Yeah, this is Lisa. Um, she helps me out. She's been with me for through quite a bit. And Hi, Lisa. Yeah. Hi. Actually, all my you? workers are pretty awesome. I mean, they're they're just they help me do what I do, and they help me live every day, and you know, keep me keep me healthy, and that's they're awesome. Hey, uh, Lisa, scoot over a little bit towards Tim so we can see a little better, because everybody want, is going to want to see. Uh, because okay. I got, I've got to meet you, but I want everybody else to meet you. Because you know, Tim's my hero, but man, you're 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 his Robin. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. Oh, absolutely. Now, and the the actual, I don't think Robin ever drove the Batmobile, but they drive my my Batmobile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Lisa, what um, have you done any thrifting on your own now that you've kind of learned watching what Tim picks? Yeah, I always find things when I'm with him. I usually keep and <laughs> t-shirts. Oh, yeah. The question yeah, is, have you sold anything yourself? Uh, no, but I find things for Tim because I'm always up at the um, the Menor or the Painesville Goodwill. So I'll stop in and send him pictures while I'm there, see if I can find anything that he would like. I'm trying to get her to FaceTime some shelves as she goes down them, and I'll watch and be like, you know, can I see that, or you know, can I see that? But we haven't, you know, got together at the same time to kind of match up that FaceTime. But yeah, they'll they'll find stuff while they're out. And same with me, you know, like I saw a sock monkey the other day, and I she collects sock monkeys, and um, she actually already had the one that I that I picked out. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun. I love it. I love it. That's great. That's great. You got any questions for Tim or uh, Lisa Nadine? Um, I, never really have a, I don't. Welcome. I don't know if I really have a question, but it seems like. Well, okay. How many? How many items do you have in your store right now? Alaska? Um, I think I just sold a couple, so I'm down to one forty-eight. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, and um, yeah. and this is and and this is obviously your full-time job, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. As much as I can be, um, yeah. I'm not the best at it. I'm still learning. Um, so you know, I ask everybody if they could critique me and help me out. You know, I do the same for anybody else. Um, right. But yeah. Um, oh, I think I think you have a great system. It seems to work great for you. Yeah. And um, wow, oh, yeah. you're really an inspiration. I mean, speaking of people that you know inspire others, um, you're awesome. So good well, thank job. You. As, as are you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you know, Tim. Tim, you know, Tim said, you know, he looks up to me, and and, and I'm his Kim Kardashian. But, you know, getting getting to know Tim, and then the story he's going to share in a little bit, it's definitely the other way. Like, Tim makes me want to be a better person because, you know, I've overcome what I had to deal with at this moment, and right now, you know, knock on wood, everything's fine. And Tim is still in that chair, but Tim's like, eh. Screw the world who, who who sends crap at me. I'm going to just plow right through it. So he must have some big old thick knobby tires on that chair because he just goes through anything. Well, I just have to say, if Tim is doing everything he can do, I can definitely be cancer. That's like Yeah, yeah you, got this. you got this. Oh, definitely. All right, so Tim, before we get into your story, I want to show your other scores and your duds, but somebody asked, how did you ship the, uh, je uh, the jet skis, the water skis? <laughs> I uh, I used a USPS. Um, I actually made a box and I laid them uh, facing kind of each other, so the um, so the bindings, I guess they are, um, are together, so that it's a little bit of rubber cushion. And I wrapped them many, many, many times with bubble wrap. Um, and then I took the, a box from uh, Lowe's. Um, they have like ten or twelve foot pieces of cardboard. Um, if anybody else needs cardboard, go to Lowe's. They have huge pieces to make Franken boxes. Um, and they were plenty long enough. And I, what I did was I laid it 
um, laid them together, and then I rolled it three times. It was kind of like a triangle, kind of like um, you get like you know you can get the little triangle or the poster boxes. It was just kind of like that, and I made it a little bit too long. So when I cut it, um, the specs and the weight actually brought it down to like uh, I think it was like twenty two bucks or something to ship it. So it actually worked out really well. I don't know how I did it, but it it lucked out. So I was I was happy. Yeah, Frankenbox is the way to go. And and if you've oh, yeah. not if you've not sold something where you had to Frankenbox it, you haven't been selling <laughs> long enough because we've yeah. all had to Frankenbox something. It's yeah. crazy. All right, yeah. Tim, let's go through a couple more of your other scores here because you know that's part of what we do here. We want to make sure to show that you know our guests are just like us. Uh, they sell. Sometimes they're winners. Sometimes they're losers. And uh, we're gonna do two more of your scores here. So here's your sure. next score. Tell us where you found it and what you paid. It is the, had, uh, uh, yeah, the espresso the machine. Salt and espresso, uh, the coffee maker. I uh, There's a little uh, a hospital like thrift shop in a uh, little town, Conyat, next to uh, next to me in, in the upper east corner of Ohio. And uh, I actually found it in a box, and I picked it up. I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but from like uh, the Krupp's like, coffee makers or whatever, it kind of looked like one of those. So I did a little bit of research, and it said salt on it. So I looked it up, and I seen that somebody had sold one for uh, like $175. So I said, you know what? This thing is three bucks, or I think it was three bucks. So I took a chance, brought it home, cleaned it up, um, you know, snapped some pictures, and made sure it worked. And uh, the guy paid, I think it was 80 85 or something that it sold for uh, after Best Offer. And uh, I did a free shipping, so it worked out pretty well. Uh, I think it was like uh, 12 or 13 bucks. I think I paid to ship it. Um, but yeah, it was awesome. Um, definitely one of the early scores that I had. So it was definitely a morale booster in that in that sense. Yeah, and you know, as, like you said, what did you say? It was three bucks, right, Tim? Wow. Yeah. That so is amazing. You know, three bucks is not a gamble. And, you know, I I always tell people when they go, should I buy this? It's a dollar. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you <laughs> learn from your mistakes. But, boy, if it's a $100 item, that dollar's going to look so sweet. Oh, All yeah. right, so here's your other score. and uh, Wow. Yeah, the, um, the Singer sewing machine, it was uh, like an early, it was like a, the, the vintage green kind of model. It came with a case. Uh, the thing weighed like 30-some pounds, 35 pounds, and I felt bad for Lisa when she had to lug it out of the, the thrift store. It was a, it a Salvation Army Erie there. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just laughed because you felt bad for Lisa. <laughs> um, yeah, we lugged it out of there. Um, we needed a little bit of cleaning and stuff, um, but yeah, like, she knows all about that stuff, so it would kind of bounce off each other, I guess, uh, learning and stuff. Like, um, that, you know, everything was there, you know, it worked fine. I did a little video. Um, I had to learn, you know, through the through the thrifting, you know, how to do the video online there. And uh, it worked out really well. Um, the guy uh, sent me a message, and we agreed on the 115. I think I had a list of for, yeah, 130. Um, and it was, uh, I did free shipping. Um, and it was, I don't remember how much I paid for shipping, but it was a beast. Um, I had to make... Uh, my own box again and you pack take it. take on the challenges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's great. But yeah, I, I was excited. Another another good score. That that's the kind of stuff that keeps me doing this really, and yep. I'm sure everybody can relate. That it's awesome. Definitely. Definitely. Now, now, Tim, when you're building the frag of boxes, can you do it, or is somebody else doing it for you? No, no. I I guess I'm kind of the mastermind um, behind it, and they kind of they're my, they're my hands. You know that that's. Yep. It's what they do, and they're awesome at it. And I just use a lot of tape and a lot of duct tape and a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of cardboard. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're Doctor Evil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. You are in dollars. No matter the level or the skill of your thrifting ability, uh, whether you've been doing it a long time like me and have a TV show out of it, or if you're kind of new like Tim, we all have our duds. So let's look at uh, let's look at Tim's duds here, and Tim will tell you why they're duds. Because sometimes duds aren't always because they weren't good sellers, especially this hot roller set right here. It's on you, Tim. 
I, I saw this on the shelf. It, I have never bought a feminine product of the hair kind um, before, so I, I took a chance on it. I got it for five ninety nine. I kind of did a little research and I threw it up there, and uh, I got it home. And I the the one worker asked me, you know, you know, where's the clip? I had no idea that it came with clips. Um, so I, in between while it was listed, I kind of scoured everywhere for clips that were cheap. I couldn't find any, but um, I ended up having it listed since like November, and I thought it would never sell. I thought I'd have to, you know, redonate it, and it finally sold for, you know, a couple bucks more than I paid. Um, but I think I, I think that's another thing that I probably paid somebody to take off my hands. So that was definitely a dud in my mind, I guess. Yeah, rollers are funny. Um, some of them are, some of them are great, and then others are, are duds. It's hard. It's hard to tell. Um, like the ones that I had shown last week were vintage rollers. Um, and like I said, I have a friend. Uh, we have a friend, Bridget. Um, who knows a lot about rollers, and so she could probably tell you more about um, why certain ones are a dud. But what I do in thrift stores, I usually look them up. There was one that I saw the other day, and it wasn't selling for much. But um, you know, so, so you never know. But um, some of them do sell great. So it was a it was a wise thing to pick up. I understand why you did. All right. Yeah. So go ahead, Tim. I was just going to say, I, I was just kind of excited to get it off my hands and, you know, get it to somebody else. <laughs> I know that it. feeling, yes. Oh, we've all had that feeling like, yes. oh, it left and it didn't really, I mean, it might have lost a couple bucks, but it still left. Yay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, here's a uh, DC Comics Justice League small t-shirt with Batman and Superman, Green Lantern and Flash. Yeah, the same with this one. I, I paid like a buck ninety nine for it. It just I just went up and down with it. I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't move it. I didn't have any watchers or anything. But you know, it was a very well made, well, well taken care of shirt. It was an excellent, excellent shirt. But I just didn't move. I didn't know what to do with it. And it, um, like that one, I sold and pretty much almost paid somebody to take it off my hands again. <laughs> maybe, like, maybe thirteen cents. I'm not positive. Yeah, here's a shirt. Uh, I'm basically giving you five dollars. Thanks, thanks for shopping. <laughs> and then Tim, hey, you have a whole little story with this one. This looks oh wow, to me, that looks this awesome. Lo yeah, it looks it like does. a scar. <laughs> yeah, it does look awesome at, at first sight. Um, which I mean, I guess I did make a little bit off it, but I went to a an amazing rummage sale, the first one I ever went to, and uh, I picked it up and quickly looked it over and the the price was actually written on like a piece of tape. Well, I got home, I started cleaning it up, and uh, I took the tape off to take pictures and stuff. And when I took the tape off, the um, the one left side hanger actually fell off, and the wires were hanging there. And I was like, well, I guess that's why the tape was on there. So, so I uh, listed it, you know, for parts um, as is and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I definitely should have looked it over better in the. The little button that hangs it up was uh, must have fell out too sometime, you know, in its travels. Uh, but it was definitely a really nice looking old antique looking phone. But um, I paid, uh, I think I paid uh, to a buck fifty for it um, and made it eighteen ish somewhere around there or uh, sixteen. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a, a story in its own. Um, but definitely not, not, never going to miss any rummage sales because that was that was an interesting experience, and it's it's definitely hard to get around the store as as a store empty, let alone hundreds of people in a gymnasium in a rummage sale. It's kind of hard to meander your way around. And was this like a church a uh, church run rummage sale? Yeah, yeah, it was a. Yeah, was, they're great. I know I've hit a few of them too, and and they just uh, you you do great at those. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey uh, Tim, a couple questions. Um, yeah. People love your photos, so here's it's a two-part question. Sure. Uh, is Lisa taking the photo? The actual taking of the photo? Um, yeah, they uh, not just Lisa, but I have uh, a Wendy and um, a girl named Jess that work for me too. Um, shout out to them out there. Um, they, they take the photos. Um, I kind of tell them here and there. You know, I stand kind of off to the side. And just kind of get the angle kind of right. Um, I was actually worried about my photos. I didn't think they looked well enough. That's fantastic. 
And oh, so it's your vision, and then people want to know what your backdrop is because they everyone loves your photos. Um, my backdrop's actually just uh, an old sheet um, that's actually yeah. it's been used, but it's very in, it's in good shape. And I actually have a uh, four um, clamp lamps from a uh, Walmart with a uh, um, just the twist uh, the twisty bulbs like the. Uh, the fluorescent type twisty bulbs, um, but the the natural lighting, I guess, um, bulbs, or the pure pure blue light or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it seems to work out really well. And there's just a poker table, and that's pretty much it. That's great. Yeah, you have, a, you have a great setup. Your pictures look really well. They look great. Thank you. I, I gotta say, Tim, the whole the whole process, your team and you, your eye, their help. It's it's phenomenal. It's it's it works, really yeah. it, it's amazing. I'm just uh, I mean I knew a lot of this, but you know I'm just seeing the, and really thinking about the pictures and seeing everyone else comment on them. I'm just like, wow, this is awesome. So yeah. uh, good on you, brother. I, I, well done. Well done for the people that help you. Well done for you. Just saying, screw it. I can uh, I can make my own way in the world. No big deal. But now I want you to share the story of goodwill. Because that's the bomb diggity story right there. Yeah, um, I went like uh, I wanted to venture out of my uh, close thrift stores. I have two within like four minutes of me, but I wanted to venture out and see you know what I could find or what I could you know how well I could do. So I went to a little bit of south. Um, I don't, you, you might be familiar with Andover uh, area. Um, they have like a huge flea market out there, but there is a Goodwill in town there. And uh, so I got out of my out of my van, and um, I'm just used to rolling up into stores. You know, they have their curb ramps or whatever. Well, there wasn't a ramp outside, and there was like a six or eight inch curb, um, way too high for me to do a wheelie up onto and get into, um, which I've done before. So I kind of asked the manager guy if he you know had a ramp in the back or a back dock I could get in. And, you know, he wasn't very helpful, but, you know, I, it, it happens. Um, so he told me, you know, the building is old enough that, you know, it could be grandfathered into, you know, having no, you know, no ramp or anything. So I kind of just said, screw it. I went home. And uh, instead of getting down or anything, I said, you know what, I'm going to find the closest uh, lumber yard, and I'm going to make my own damn ramp, and I'm going to get in the store and... And do some shopping and you know so I contacted them too and I let them know that you know there's no ramp out there and they're probably missing out on some profits there's got to be some you know disabled individuals out there or some elderly people that need you know wheelchairs too that can't get in the store and uh, you know we were in talk for a little bit well they weren't doing anything so I went and made my own ramp at the lumber store right down the road and took it there and got in and I actually found some awesome stuff there. I found like a, um, a Steve Miller band shirt and uh, like a WWF um, jersey kind of thing, and there was actually some good scores. And it was around Christmas time um, that I went back and I found like an ugly sweater. Um, it was really cool, but I didn't buy it. I should have. I kind of regret it, but that was something that I wasn't going to let keep me down. Um, you know, I went full in on it and just. You know, anything I do, I do it that way. You know, I stop and think until I get a solution and, you know, to fix my issue. So a couple things I want to say about that is um, you're the man. You're awesome. I mean, that's – anybody who, anybody who watches this, who walks on two feet, who gets up in the morning and stubs their toe or their cat poops on the carpet, <laughs> and if you complain about your day – and you've heard Tim's story, then shame on you. Because Tim said, screw it, I ain't letting anything hold me down. I'll make my own ramp. I'm in a wheelchair, but I'm going to make my own ramp. That is amazing. That is. I try, I try. Oh, you're doing great. Uh, unbelievable. But, you know, I'm so glad you found a uh, Steve Miller shirt. I'll, I'll tell a quick story, because it definitely ties in together. Uh, when, I, uh, when I was uh, growing up, my my mom's brother, my uncle Nino, he was my godfather and my uncle, obviously. And he took me to my first concert when I was 10 years old. Nice. 
he threw me on the back of his motorcycle. And hey, Timmy, have you ever been to Blossom Music Center? Uh, in Cleveland? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, 10 years old, back of a Harley, off we go to Charlie Daniels. Juice Newton is open. It's the height of Devil Went Down to Georgia. And Juice oh. Newton playing with the Queen of Hearts uh, or Angel, an Angel in the Morning. And we were in crummy seats, but by the end of the show, he had stuck me down to the 10th row. And I saw Charlie play that fiddle for Devil Went Down to Georgia. And from no. that moment on, I was hooked on concerts. And I've been oh. to. 2200 cents then give or take so wow. um my uncle has passed away of because of cancer and so that's part of the donation in his name but him and i when uh, cleveland state opened up their new arena called the, it at the time it was called the convocation center the first event was a steve miller concert and we got there early and got stoned in the bathroom we were the first ones to get stoned at the cleveland state Convoca convocation center for the steve miller concert Woo awesome, awesome. So thanks for finding a Steve Miller uh, shirt so I can work in a, a cool story about my uncle because uh, he, he meant a lot to me, and I, I'm, I'm bummed. He's really bummed he's not here, but we're going to raise some money uh, on behalf of Nadine and him and anybody else that's ever been affected by cancer in anybody's lives. We're going to make a huge group donation uh, but on behalf of all of us for all our friends and family that have been affected by it. I'll get right on getting my bra head picture uh, right up there. I'll get it as soon as I get off here. Yeah, I, I see we already, ha we already have one contestant. I mean, that's, you know, wow, that's, that's awesome. Great. I, I hope Cheryl's still listening, but uh, uh, I am. Uh, somebody was asking about how to donate. I will put the link to where we're donating uh, into the uh, contest, and we'll be promoting it the rest of the week. So, Besides, I want everyone to participate. I also want everyone to, uh, you know, spread the word. Take our contest page from our fa from our fan page, and push it out to your friends and family. You might win yeah. money, but the more people who do it, the more I will donate uh, on behalf of Nadine, my uncle Nino, and everybody else. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, it's it's great that um that um we can do this, and for people like myself and others who are struggling with uh, with cancer and, and other challenges. So I, I really appreciate it. And damn you, Tim, you made me cry today, buddy. Sorry, man. I, uh, happy, happy tears to everybody. Uh, no, it, it's quite all right. You know, it's uh, I, I promise you not every show will be emotional, but we want every show to be inspirational. So not always emotional, but inspirational. Like we want to, we want to have fun and share our scores and like rum cocktails, but we want to share inspiration too, because you know, you don't uh, you, you find inspiration in, in funny and weird ways. You meet people that you didn't know will touch you in your life, and so uh, that's what I want our show to be. And I really think that's what our show is is becoming. I really, uh, I, I'm grateful that Tim came on tonight. I love, I love my co-host, and I think this is going to be an awesome, awesome show. And it's going to do a lot of good. We're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, that's all i got to say about that. Thank you guys for bringing me on for your second show. I don't know how else to say. I was so excited all day long. And since you asked me, actually, I was so nervously excited. But oh, it, you did great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was such an honor to have you on the show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. We're going to say goodbye to you, and then we're going to get out of here in two seconds. But uh, goodbye, Tim. I will see you on Thirteen with the Boys later, and uh, we will chat, brother. Take care, everyone. And, and bye, bye, Tim. Thank bye, you. Lisa. Bye, bye Lisa. Bye, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. All right, Nay, how do you think our second show went after my catastrophe at the beginning? Well, I think we did great, and I think Tim was Tim was fantastic. I think he hit it out of the ballpark, so... Yeah, he was. Uh, you know, Debbie had great. Um, Debbie had great tips last week for books. Tim had a great inspirational yeah. story. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it, like I said, if he can, if he can be that, and he can still, you know, and he's doing what he's doing, then I can kick a little thing called cancer. That's that's small potatoes compared to <laughs> what he's doing. So. Yep, I I fully agree. Uh, Tim's the man, and. If uh, a guy in a wheelchair that does not have much use of his body can go get, build a ramp so he can do what he exactly. wants to do, we mm -hmm. all can do what we want to do. Get up mm -hmm. out of your chair, go do what you want to do. 
Find that thing that you're like, oh, I can't do it. Go do it. Exactly. I mean, that's very, it. very motivating and very inspiring. He was great. I mean, that's it. You know, that's that's the bottom line. Go do it. You know, life's too short. Life is way too short to not go do it. You know, and so all right. Let's raise some money, people. Let's have some fun. I want to see some funny pictures of you and your bras on your head. Put them on your kids. I don't care if your kid's screaming. Put it on your kid's head. Let's have some fun. Let's raise some money because maybe the money we raise is the help that Nadine gets in the future, too. Yeah, I actually ran into some obstacles with some of the testing I have today. They, they just don't have the technology um, to... Um, to test for everything with, with um, genetic testing for the cancer. And um, I ran into that today, I ran into an obstacle and they said, we just don't have the technology, we need to do more research, unfortunately. So um, it's definitely needed and um, you know, maybe someday they'll, there'll be a cure so that um, you know, other women won't have to face this or other types of cancer um, in general. So, so thank you, everyone. So the, the chat is saying our, our new saying is going to be build a ramp. Like, <laughs> moan and I something. like that. I like that. <laughs> build a ramp. And that's how we're going to end it. I love that. That is awesome. That's great. <laughs> so I want to thank, I want to thank everyone that tuned in. Oh, too loud, too loud, too loud. Thank you everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We love doing this show. We love the comments. Uh, you know, follow me. It's my YouTube channel, Jason Smith. Leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down, but tell us why you don't like it. I'll listen. We'll talk, but come join our contest. Win some money. Let's raise some money. Let's have a good time. Thank you, Nay. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Ta-ta. What's happening, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to episode number two of Thrifty Business with J and A. Oh, where am I? All right, so I'm having a little bit. Shoot, is that your end or my end? What, what, what's... Oh, talk for a sec, Nay. Hi, everybody. There we go. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I had uh, a... <laughs> not, a, not a great way to start. I had the open feed of the show live in my ears, and it was screwing me up, and I couldn't figure out where the open window was. So let's try it again. Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to episode two <laughs> of Thrifty Business with Jay and Nay. I'm your host, Vegas Jay. And I'm Philly Nay. Holy cow. Sorry about that. I, I thought I was so ready. I was like wandering around my house. I was like, yeah, we got it. We're, we're ahead of the schedule today. What a ding -a -ling. We're all good. It's okay. <laughs> all right. When we start every show, we started with Jason's Tiki Talk. So let's get right into that. And tonight we are going to be actually drinking an actual cocktail. I have foregone the Cuba Libre for this evening, and I made a real cocktail. So the cocktail is called Ciro Special. And Ciro's was a, Holly, um, a nightclub in Hollywood back in the 1940s, and that's when this drink uh, was invented. So it wasn't really a tiki place, so to speak, uh, but they had good rum cocktails. And the main base rum, or the rum in this drink, is uh, dark Jamaican rum. So I am using Legend. This is a Myers 10-year-aged rum. It's really, really yummy. And my cocktail, or my uh, tiki mug of the evening, is called the, um, it's from the Islander, it was a tiki restaurant, and this mug is called the Islander Earring Head. So I'm going to take a little sip of my Ciro Special. Okay. And I am also um, participating in Jay's Tiki Time. Um, I have a... And put up a picture of yourself wearing a bra on your head, or your kid, or your dog, or your cat, or your turtle, or whatever you got. And... Uh, on behalf of my co-host Nadine, my wife Stacy and I are going to donate one dollar to the National Breast Cancer Awareness Fund. Awareness Fund, 
per entry, and we have up to $1,000. So we need 1,000 people to enter this contest. I would like to give $1,000 on behalf of Nadine and every family member and friend that any one of us watching or in the show here has been affected by cancer. So this here's... Is, sorry. This is so great. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you. This is great that we're doing this. Um, this is the kind of... Um, thing that I wanted this to turn into, um, you know, instead of a, a sad thing. It's, I think that, you know, we can definitely do some good. So, so here's the, uh, here's the deal. So not only are we going to raise money, so my wife and I will donate a dollar for every contestant who enters. Uh, we're going to hopefully get everyone else to donate. So I know if some people don't have a lot of money, if we got a thousand people to participate and everybody just donated just $5, and Stacey and I put in a thousand. That'd be six thousand dollars to breast cancer awareness, and I think that would be an awesome, awesome thing. But there's more. But wait, there's more. There are prizes. The first prize gets a hundred and fifty dollar eBay gift card. Now you cannot beat that for throwing a bra on your head. If you're funny and you can come up with a funny shot, you get hundred fifty bucks. Second prize one hundred dollars. Third prize fifty dollars. These are all gift cards to eBay. So. I am going to launch it right now on our fan page, and you can start tonight. We're going to run the contest for one week, and the only place you can play is on our fan page. So please go over there and like it and start putting those pictures up, and then I cannot wait to send them a big check at the end of the week. All right? I'm so excited about this contest. It's going to be great. Be creative. Be funny. You know, you got a pet turtle? Wrap him in your bra. Do something. Uh, our our picture here, I thought, was both of us was hilarious. I'm going to pop that back up here because there's us being a goofball. So let's, let's get this up. I, you got, we got a week to get 1,000 entries, all right? So I'm counting on everybody to participate. Plus, what the heck, you might win $150 worth of shopping on eBay. You can't beat that. All righty. So that's our contest. Uh we will have links, uh, you know, like I said, go to our fan page. We'll have it in Thrifting with the Boys. Uh, but now we are going to get into the uh, main meat of the show. And we are going to talk. So keep in mind, Kamehameha didn't make just ties. They made all kinds of Hawaiian wear. It always sells well for me. It sold well for Nadine. So keep your eyes peeled. Yep. So. All right. I'm popping back into us, and you have a score to show us. Um, yeah. So while I was thrifting uh, this week with, uh, with Jason was in Philly, I actually found this. Uh, it's a Shakita Banana Women's Cycling Jersey, and it's new with tags. I actually found it in the children's section, but it's a women's size small. Um, and the only ones that I've been able to pull up, I haven't been able to pull up any completeds yet, um, but the only ones I've been able to pull up so far are men's, and they are listed at $90 right now. So I have a good feeling this one is going to be a big score for me once I... Once I get it listed and sold, so I'll, I'll update everyone on that. You know, we should have done is taken a picture of me in it. Well, it would have ruined it, but... <laughs> it would have been a little too small, too. Yeah. yeah. It's a small. I am far from small. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we have seen our scores of the week, and then we know what's next. Oh, there we go. And what is next is our duds of the week, because not everything is a winning... Uh, is a winning item. So we all have our duds. All right. Oh, whoops, wrong. So my dud, where'd my duds go? Oh, they're there. Here's my dud. And I thought, uh, I thought it would be a winner. So I was at a Savers one day, and they somebody had dropped somebody obviously a tequila rep had dropped off all these bandanas. There was um, a yellow Cabo Wabo and a black Cabo Wabo, which is what I sell quite well. And then these Jose Cuervos, everyone knows a Jose Cuervo. I can't give these bandanas away, so I got them for nine ninety nine. I, I was taking offers of five bucks with free shipping because it. Uh, it just sits, and I have, I don't know, 50 of them, so maybe one day I will use them as a party favor. So if you ever come to my house and you leave with a Jose Cuervo tequila bandana, you know why. All right, so that's mine, and then here is Nadine's uh, dud of the week. Okay, this is a dud because 
I sell a lot of yarn, and I actually bought this um, when I first started selling yarn. The rest of the bottle I'm from last week, <laughs> the blue chair rum that we shared last week, and I have um, a little lime, a little juice, and a little bit of rum. And my tiki mug is actually a dud mug. It's just a common <laughs> mug, but I like it. Um, and it was chipped, so I was going to put it in a lot, and uh, I couldn't put it in the lot because of the chip. So I'm keeping it for myself, and I'm pretty happy with it. So. And uh, cheers. cheers, baby. And I'm going to do something different this week because we're actually um, doing a cocktail. I am showing you the recipe. So if you want to write it down. Here's the recipe. It's, it's very simple. I actually made a double batch, so I didn't have to run off in the middle of the show to make another one. It's meant to be served kind of um, straight up with uh, in a martini-type glass. So uh, fresh lime juice, uh, cream de cassis, Grand Marnier, and dark Jamaican rum. So you shake it over ice and strain it into a cocktail glass. It is yummy. Everyone that comes here that has one in my house is like, oh, my God, that was so delicious. So that is my drink for this evening. Mmm, so good. So let's uh, let's dive right into let's dive right into you. If you tuned in last week, you saw some news, and uh, we're gonna check in with Nay and see how she's doing and where we're at. And uh, she wants to say a couple things. So the floor is yours, Nadine. Okay. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone for the outpouring of support. It was actually overwhelming to me. I didn't expect to have so much love and support um, from everyone. And I just wanted you all to know that I have read all of the positive comments, um, and um, I've also um, received a lot of personal messages. And I will get to answering all of those. Um, it's just, um, like I said, it's been a little bit overwhelming because I didn't expect to receive such a great response. And thank you so much, everyone, for your love and support. And um, I feel like I can fight even harder with everybody behind me. So I really wanted to just say that I appreciate that. And we have decided, based on Nadine's news, to do something fun mm -hmm. and to raise some money. So here is what we are going to do. This this got born out of one of the members in Thrifting with the Boys put a picture of herself wearing the bra she was about to sell in her head. Gwen Sharp. Hello, Gwen. And so we have born this idea. Our contest is a buck for a bra. And here's the details. We are going to have everybody go to our fan page, Thrifty Business with JNA, like it, and then think about. Hello, where's my mouse? There we go. Oh, what is going on there? Oh, there we go. It helps to turn it up. All right. There we go. Tonight, we're, now we're going to talk about our scores of the week. And our scores of the week are typically items that we found that are going to be, you know, we found for cheap and they're going to be good sellers. So here is my score of the week. I got to pick, uh, I picked the Riviera Casino closing sale five times. And mm -hmm. I, on two separate occasions, found uh, all of their, uh, the tap handles from the bars. So this is one that uh, I did quite well on. All the tap handles were $5.00. And this one uh, sold for $39.50. And if you have an eBay store right now, the new structure to the store is you get 100 free collectible auctions a month. So that's what I used. I did some free auctions for collectibles. And if you notice, I did a nice close-up of the top of the uh, beer tap because there's a squirrel holding the hop. Now, I could have done the full shot. And when I do things that are long like this, I do a shot on an angle so it kind of fills up the square. But I wanted people, especially people shopping on their phone, to see it, get excited about it. And, hey, I got seven bids. I started at $24.99, and it closed at almost 40 bucks. So I think I did quite good on that. So that's my score today. That's a good score. And we're going to pop. I'm not even going to come back. I'm going to pop right into nays. And so. Okay. So this, um, actually, the reason that this is a score is because I bought three similar um, Kamehameha um, Hawaiian ties. Um, all together for ten dollars, so um, I paid approximately three thirty-three a piece, and I this is the second one that I've already sold for full asking price of thirty-four ninety-nine. I only have one left now, so um, that lot that I purchased was definitely a big score. Um, 
like I said, I still have one more to sell, and I and I believe that it'll go for the same price. So, um, so that's my one score, and then I have another one to show. So before we drop off, jump off this mm -hmm. one, if mm -hmm. I ever had to wear a tie, which will never happen again <laughs> for the rest of my life, I would rock this one. It is a cool tie, yeah. That is an amazing, amazing tie, and I'll we'll show we'll show the label here because this is um, a vintage Kamehameha yeah. label. So there's the label. Uh, and you'll see this on shirts and dresses too. So 